Okay, so how is everyone today? Okay, so we got to go over something real short for a minute here. And that is, um, I have a question for you. Essentially, essentially almost every um, culture that has ever existed counts in base 10. Why is that? Because there's a reason for it. Like, <coughs> it's like because it's the well, algorithm. Why? I mean, no. Why don't Why don't we count? You know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Why do we not do something like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, twenty? Presumably because we have ten fingers. This is the one and only reason. <laughs> Yes. Oh, we, we only have, have eight, uh, eight fingers. Well, well the f calling calling these thumbs is an, is a, a, a and saying that these aren't fingers is is uh, not oh, universal in, in culture. We have ten appendages on our hands. Yeah. There you go. So ten we count in base ten because we have ten fingers. That's the only reason. And if we could go back and say, you know what, it might be better. Let's go back to the place where we're going to choose what base we're going to count in. It might be better for us to choose a, a number different than 10, to be quite honest with you. Okay, there's other different choices that, would, that might be nicer. Like base 8 would be nicer because it's a power of 2. Okay, but we count in base 10 because, okay, we've got 10 fingers. That's convenient. Okay, great. So, <clears throat> so um, now, if you, have, if you have a number, say like 13... That's in, that's in decimal. Well, the way that you can write it in, in base 8 is you can notice that in decimal, isn't this 8 plus 5? So that's 8 plus 5. So if you are counting in base 8, that means that 13 in decimal is 15 in octal. That is to say base 8, because there's one 8 and then five, five more. So it's one 8 and five units. By the way, that's what 33 means. That means three tens and three ones. That's what that means. So this is 15 in octal. Okay, so 13 in decimal is 15 in octal. So I have a question for you. <coughs> What is 25 in octal? Using base 8. Mm-hmm, in base 8. 30, right, because it would be 8 plus 8 plus 8 plus 1. So how many 8s are there? Three. Three of them, and then there's one unit. So is 31 in octal? And for this reason... That's why, so decimal 25 is the same as octal 31, which is why mathematicians can't tell the difference between Christmas and Halloween. <laughs> okay, that was terrible. <laughs> Wait, does that explain the whole Nightmare Before Christmas thing? <laughs> well, I don't, I don't know, maybe. <laughs> Tim Burton, yeah, he's an interesting character. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, now we're on to business. <laughs> Section 5.2. I know, <laughs> I took a valuable space. <laughs> Polynomial. Functions. I, I make it my personal goal to be able to have a math joke for any topic. <coughs> okay. I was just confused because talking about bases might go to an example which been binary. Yeah, so that would have been good, but it wasn't, it wasn't topical. <laughs> okay, so polynomial functions. So to remind you, this is something that you already know. So 
two things. So a sequence of functions. So all of them are going to be powers of x. So this one will be, this first one will be x to 1, and then x to 2, and then x to 3, and then x to 4. OK. So now let's draw each one of these. So what does x to 1 look like? Correct? So like this one. And then x squared is the standard parabola. x cubed is the cubic. x to 4 is the quartic, which looks like the parabola, except steeper on the sides and flatter near the origin. Okay. So all th so you already were familiar with these. So now what I would like to point out is I want to introduce uh, a new bit of notation and that is the following. So uh, as x goes to negative infinity. So what I mean to say is that as you go to the left, right, so if you, were, if you were on this function and x was going to negative infinity, meaning to say you're going to the left, what is y doing? y goes to negative infinity. Okay, and similarly, as x goes to positive infinity, what does y do for this one? y goes to positive infinity. That is to say, in plainer language, as you go to the right, you go up. And this is, this is understood be, to mean eventually. Okay, you go far enough to the right you're going up. Okay, same statements for the next one. So as, as x goes to negative infinity, what does y do for this one? Goes to positive infinity. And <clears throat> as x goes to positive infinity, what does y do? positive infinity again. Okay. So now quickly I want you to fill out the last two. <coughs> so for this one, as x goes to the left, y goes down. As x goes to the right, y goes up. And for this one, as x goes to the left, y goes up. And as x goes to the right, y goes up. Okay. Now, the purpose of, of, I can start, I can get to the purpose of this page. Okay, and the purpose of this page is now, we're going to ignore the picture. And what I'd like for you to observe about these is, each one of these lines, the top line represents the left behavior, the bottom line, the right behavior. The left behavior is down, and the right behavior is up. 
And what I'd like for you to, to observe about these is that these behaviors, left and right, on, on this specific one, are opposite. Which is to say, that one is down and that one is up. How about for this one? These are the same. Okay, how about the next one? Opposite. And how about the last one? Same. So can someone give me a hypothesis about what's happening here? What, is, what does opposite mean about the degree? It means odd. And what does same mean about the degree? Even. Even. Okay, which is exactly the this, is the, this is the analytic way to understand the picture point of view to say that, well, when you draw these things, they sort of have two arms, the left arm and the right arm. If the left and right arms are doing opposite things, then this must be an odd uh, degree polynomial. And if they're doing the same thing, both up, both up, then it must be an even degree polynomial. Okay. So that means that I could do something like this. I could say, okay, how about, how about a polynomial that does that, that you can see there? Will such a polynomial be even or odd, and why? Yes, as, yeah, the same. Or no, they're, no, they're different. No. They're opposite, so this polynomial must be odd. And it's nice that the words opposite and odd both start with O. Ooh, spooky, no, <laughs> just coincidence. <clears throat> okay, so then, so that means that you know, I should be able to give you just these two sentences and no picture whatsoever. And if I was to say, suppose we have a polynomial function that satisfies these two sentences, and you should be able to address the question whether or not it's even or odd. Okay? So the next thing, the next thing, is now I'm going to draw the, the same four pictures, almost, Except this will still be x to 1, x to 2, x to 3, x to 4, except I'm going to negate them. So this will be negative x, negative x, negative x, negative x. So negative x to <coughs> 1, negative x to 2, negative x to 3, and negative x to and then what's the order of operations? Pim, dos, whatever thingy. Right, so then this mean, in particular, this one means that if you were to plug in, say, 3, what would you get? Negative 9, because you, you would square the 3 and then negate. What if you were to plug in negative 4 into this one? You get negative 16, because you'd square the negative 4 to get 16, and then you would negate. So how do, how do these look in comparison to those? A vertical reflection. So they look like this. Okay, so now I could ask you, but I'm not going to ask you now, to write all of the analogous <coughs> sentences, right? You could ask, I could ask analogous sentences, so I'll just ask out loud. As x goes to negative infinity, what does y do? Positive infinity. And as x goes to positive infinity, y goes to 
negative infinity. Okay, so I could ask you to write all those sentences. I could, you know, in principle, ask you to do that. Okay, <clears throat> so now we considered for these pictures, and especially for the first four, we were considering the left and right branches, and we were noticing when they were opposite or same, opposite or same. Okay, now I want you to consider for for the moment only the right branch, and I want you to tell me up or down. So how about this one? This one? This one? This one? How about the next one that I didn't draw? Left. <laughs> Up, right? So then how about these? The right branch. Down. The right branch. The right branch. The right branch. Okay. So, so what all of these have in common, what all of these have in common is that they have a positive leading coefficient. The coefficient is 1. 1, 1 times x to 1, 1 times x to 2, 1 times x to 3, 1 times x to 4. If I was to multiply them by 10, they'd be just like this, except they'd be vertically stretched out. And the right branches would still be up, 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 up. Now this is negative. The, the leading coefficient is negative. Negative 1, negative 1, negative 1, negative 1. And the right branch is always down, 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 down. There's nothing special about negative 1 if I had used negative 20 it would still be take this one, turn it over, stretch it out, and it, the right branch would still be down, 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 down. So the leading coefficient tells you the behavior of the right arm. That means that I should be able to draw for you any polynomial, and then you should be able to tell me the sign of the leading coefficient just by looking at the behavior of the right arm. So let's summarize this. So continuation of the previous remark. So now, this is a table. Here, this will be the degree parity. What does parity mean? Very good. And then this one will be <coughs> the leading coefficient sign. So the leading coefficient could be negative or it could be positive. And then the degree parity could be odd or it could be even. And now what we're going to do is we're going to draw every combination. OK. <clears throat> so let's start out with this one. So the leading coefficient is positive. Okay, Leading coefficient is positive. So what does that mean about the right branch? It means that it goes up. So the right branch is going up. Okay, and the fact that the fact that the degree is odd means what's going to happen to the left branch. It has to go down because odd means the behavior of, of the branches must be opposite. This one goes up and therefore necessarily the other down. So now, we haven't talked about this yet, but we will. So these are the left and right branches. They must have this behavior. But if we have a polynomial, then close to the origin, it could have some kind of wiggle. And we'll talk about the wiggle in a minute. So what this means is that eventually, to the left, it goes down. And eventually, to the right, it goes up. The wiggle in the middle, we have, we're going to address that in the second half of today. Okay. So 
a positive leading coefficient, what does that mean about the right branch? It must go up. A, and a, an even degree, what does that mean about the left branch then? It must also go up because it must be the same as the right branch. So up and up. And some kind of wiggle in the middle. Okay. So how about this one? The right branch. Up. Down. Must be down because the leading coefficient is negative. So it must be going down. And then the left branch. Must go up. Why must it go up? Because it must be the opposite, right? This is down because it's a negative leading coefficient. This one is up because it has to be the opposite of the, of the one on the right. Okay, so then eventually that, eventually that, and in between, you know, who knows what, a wiggle. And then <coughs> for this one, uh, the right branch, down. The left branch, down. And then in between, wiggle. So the idea here is that, well, you should just be able to cover up that wiggle and get the and understand what the degree parity, even or odd, and also the sign of the leading coefficient, right? Just cover up the wiggle. Cover up the wiggle. Okay? So let's have an example of doing this. I want you to tell me all these things. <coughs> so as x goes to the left, blank. As x goes to the right, blank. The degree parity, blank. And the leading coefficient sign blank. Okay, so how about it? As you go to the left, you go up. So you say y to positive infinity. Okay, how about as you go to the right? You go down. Now wait a second, look, when I'm right here and I go to the right, I'm going up. That's not yeah, that's part of the eventually. eventually. Uh, right, uh, understand that this means eventually. This means that you get past all the wiggle in the middle. Eventually, you get far enough to the right, you're going down. Okay? So any question about finding these? Okay, how about what's the degree parity? Must be odd. Okay. So now, why is it odd using only the picture? Right, the, the arms are doing opposite things, so it must be odd. Okay, 
now without the picture. Why is it odd? Right, because analytically, we just got finished saying these, these two behaviors right here. Notice that this one is up and that one's down. Odd. Okay. Then what is the leading coefficient of the sign? Uh, the, the, sorry, the sign of the leading coefficient is negative. Okay, so then this oddness is the conclusion of opposite. Tells us this. And this, all by itself, tells us that one. Because that's the right branch. The right branch is down. Any question about this example? OK, so then I'm going to do the same kind of thing. Except now I'm not going to draw a picture. Now I'm going to give you these two sentences. As x goes to the left, y goes down. As x goes to the right, y goes down. And I want for you to draw a picture that does that. And I want you to also tell me the degree parity. And I want you to tell me the leading coefficient sign. So now I gave you these two. You fill in the other bits. So how about it? The parity. Even. even. I agree. Why should it be even? Right. Because correct. So then if we look at the left and right behaviors, they're the same. The left and right behaviors are the same. And that is how we make that conclusion. Okay, then what is the leading coefficient sign? Must be negative. Is it because the leading coefficient is always negative? <laughs> to the to the right, the the behavior on the right is what is what tells us that. Okay. So now, draw a picture that that does this, which means essentially that it needs to be coming from the bottom left. Any kind of wiggle you like, reasonable wiggle there, and then back down. OK, any question about this one? So I should be able to give you any bit of the information, and you could fill in the rest. OK. So now that's, that's, the, that's the behavior when you, the, the eventual behavior, the behavior eventually going to the left, the behavior eventually going to the right. And what I'd like to point out, part of what I'd like to point out, is that when I give you just this, this is the eventual behavior to the left and right, and it says nothing about the wiggle in the middle. Okay, you could, I could have drawn a different picture that had a different wiggle, and it would have been just as satisfying to these constraints. Okay, so now we need to deal with the, with the wiggle. So there's two facets that we want to deal with. Definition. So the x intercepts a 
of a polynomial are called zeros. They're called zeros because they are inputs so that the output is zero. And that's the reason why they are called they are referred to as zeros. So to give an example. So how many zeros does this, uh, does this polynomial have? It has two, right? So there's one, and here's another. So there's a zero, and there's a zero. So this polynomial has two zeros. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so now, this is not a not what we're addressing today, but we will address it soon, so I want to foreshadow it. I'd like to notice that there is a qualitative difference between these two zeros. This is a zero because it, and, and notice that the polynomial crosses that zero, it crosses it. And here's a zero, the polynomial doesn't cross, it bounces off of it, so it bounces off. Okay, so this one it crosses, this one bounces off. That's something we're going to pay close attention to in the coming days, but not, not just now. But what I'd like for you to observe is that look at that zero really close. Is the behavior on either side of it the same or opposite? It's, it's opposite, right? It's one side is down and the other side up. And have a look at this one. Is that the same or opposite? The same. And so when, when it's opposite, when we were talking about that uh, before, what did opposite behavior mean about parity? Mm -hmm. It meant odd. And what did same behavior mean about parity? Mm -hmm. Even. And we're, there's going to be a, a similar thing that's going to happen later. But that's just foreshadowing. So zeros are where it touches the x-axis. Okay. <coughs> Two. the local extrema, that is to say, mins and maxes of a polynomial are called turning points. So, how many turning points does this have? It has three. So I think we can all agree that this one is a turning point. What else is a turning point? The bottom, right? Okay, good. <laughs> there's, there's this movie called Zootopia. <laughs> And there's a joke in it. This is an old joke. What do you call a three-humped camel? Pregnant. My five-year-old daughter thinks that that is the funniest joke of mm -hmm. all time. That is the top joke. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so 
<laughs> so polynomials have zeros and turning points. So the wiggle, the wiggle, you can kind of think of it like, well, this polynomial, you know, it's going to do this. And if I was to move the turning points around and zeros and also specify the left and right behavior, you can kind of think it like, well, I've got to come up from here and then I've got to go through the zero and make it through all the turning points and then I can do what I want to do. So the, the, the zeros and the turning points, they encode the wiggle in the middle. Okay, so here's a remark. And so for now, this is just going to be, I'm telling you something that is a fact, but in a later math class, uh, you'll need to actually establish this if you, if, you, if you end up taking more advanced math classes. So I'm going to say two statements. And then I'm going to say, for each of those two statements, I'm going to say two versions of that statement. Okay, so the first statement, the forward version. Is that degree K, or sorry, degree N uh, means at most N zeros. So degree n means that you can have at most n zeros. So for example, if we look on the first page, what's the degree of this? Three. Three. How many zeros does it have? Three. Just, just one. <laughs> right? It just crosses just the one place, right? So is one at most three? One is less than or equal to three, yes. <laughs> okay. So, okay. So that means that a polynomial of degree five can have at most how many zeros? Five. Could it have four? Yeah. Could it have three or two or one? Yeah, sure. Okay. So uh, degree n means at, low, at most n zeros. So now English is, in the study of languages, okay, it's an SVO language. What does that mean, SVO? Yeah, so SVO means subject, verb, object. Okay, so degree in the subject means, that's the verb, at most n zeros. So, so n zeros is the object, and then here we have at most, which is a quantifier. So now this, 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 I'm going to switch the position of the subject and the object. Okay, and that's, that's going to end up negating the quantification. So the backwards version of this sentence, and this, these two sentences mean exactly the same thing. They have the, the same logical content. So uh, n zeros means at least degree n. So what that means is that if I was to draw for you a polynomial that has six zeros, then it has to be at least degree six. It must be at least degree six. It could be degree seven. If I was to give you a polynomial with six zeros, could it be degree two? No, it could not. Okay. These two sentences mean exact, ha have the exact same logical content. It's just we're swapping the positions of subject and object. Okay. The forward version of the next one. <clears throat> Degree N means at most N minus 1 turning points. Okay. So 
For example, in your mind's eye, imagine a parabola. What is the degree of, the, of a parabola? Two. And how many turning points does a parabola have? One. Okay. So how about now, I give, if I was to give you a polynomial of degree three, what is the maximum number of turning points? Two. 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 It can have two. Okay. So now, the backwards version of this sentence. N turning points means at least degree n plus 1. So now, again, in your mind's eye, imagine a parabola. How many turning points does a parabola have? One. That means that the polynomial defining it must be at least degree 2. two. Okay? If I was to give you a drawing and you counted five turning points, what's the minimum degree? Six. six. Has to be at least degree 6. Okay. So now, we're going to take the previous information about end behavior, right, this thing, and this thing, and we're going to start playing the detective who done it, right? Okay. So suppose I give you suppose I give you the following drawing. questions I'm, and I'm going to ask them. So first question, as x goes to negative infinity, blank. As x goes to positive infinity, blank. The degree parity, blank. The leading coefficient sign, The number of zeros, zeros, blank. The number of turning points, blank. And then, as a consequence of all of this, what is the minimum degree? done anything yet, but is there any question about the statement of the, of the exercise? <clears throat> okay. So as you go to the left, you go down. So y goes to negative infinity. As you go to the right, you go up. So y goes to positive infinity. Okay. How about the degree parity then? Must be odd. Why odd? Right, because the eventual behavior is opposite. Okay, what's the leading coefficient sign? Must be positive. Why must it be positive? Right, because the right side goes up. So it must be positive. How many zeros? It's two zeros. So here's a zero. And here's a zero. So that's a zero, and that's a zero. Okay. 
So the fact that it's degree, the, the fact that it has two zeros means it must be at least degree what? Three. No? Two. It must be at least degree two. Oh, okay. Right? At least degree two. Now, is it degree two? No. No, it's definitely not degree two because we know the shape of everything that's degree two. What is the shape of everything that's degree two? Parabola. parabola. Is this a parabola? No. no. So, so we know you, from this information alone, just the fact that there's two zeros, we know that it must be at least degree two. We know that. But looking at the picture, we can tell, okay, yeah, it's not actually degree two, though. Okay. So how many turning points does it have? Four, right? So here's one turning point. So that's a turning point. That's a turning point. That's a turning point. And this zero is also a turning point. So that point is a zero and a turning point. Interesting. So there's four turning points. Okay, now taking all <laughs> this, inf this information together, what is the minimum degree? Five. five. Why is its minimum degree five? Because minimum degree is turning point plus one. Right. This, this is saying the minimum degree is, is at least two. This is saying the minimum degree is at least five. So five. So could the degree be six? Yes. So I got yes, and I also got no. <laughs> it has. It can't be. It cannot have degree six. But it could be seven. Couldn't be eight. Might be nine. Okay. Good. So, so any question about about this exercise? Okay. What time is it? Okay, we have enough time for one more. So now, now I'm going to give you a drawing. I'm, I'm going to no, I'm going to give you the axis, but I'm not going to give you the drawing. But but I'm going to give you some of this information on the right. So as x goes to negative infinity, y goes to uh, positive infinity. And as x goes to positive infinity, y goes to positive infinity. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you uh, the zeros. So I'm not going to tell you the number of zeros. I'm going to tell you what the zeros actually are. So the zeros are, say, x is negative 2, uh, x is 0, and uh, how about x is 3. And what I want you to do is I want you to draw a picture that does this. Draw a picture that does this. Okay, let's think about it for a minute. Let's think about it for a minute. Uh, is it... So how many zeros does it have? It has three zeros. It has three zeros, which means it has to be at least degree three. Furthermore, is it even or odd? It must be even because the left and right behaviors are the same. So if it must be at least degree 3 and it must be even, then it has to actually be at least degree what? 4. four. Couldn't do this with something less than degree 4, which means that we would be allowed a maximum, what's the maximum number of turning points that we can have? If, it's, if, we, if we say that it's degree 4, then the maximum number of turning points is 3. So see if you can make this happen with a polynomial that's degree 4 that has three turning points. So the zeros would be here, here, and here. So we've got to come from the top left and 
deal with these zeros, and then zoom away to the top right. What do you think? Can you figure it out? Yeah, you need, you need two of them to be crossing, two zeros to be crossings, and one to bounce. So I'll make the first one bounce for no good reason, just because one of them has to be that way. So that, did, what I drew, did what I draw agree with all of that information? I think, I think so. <laughs> I meant for it to. <laughs> okay, have a nice Monday.